Welcome to the Brain People Podcast, a show where four mental health experts team up to bring you practical tools for overcoming mental health challenges. The Brain People don't replace your doctor or therapist, but we will give you some extra tools to help you on your journey. So join us as we fight mental illness, one episode at a time. Welcome to the Brain People Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Daniel Bynus, and today I have a very special guest, one of my great friends and one of my great inspirations, and his name is David Woody Bartley. So David, thank you so much, or Woody, (laughs) I should should, uh, say, as as you, you, we talked about beforehand, um, that's what your friends call you, and uh, you feel more endeared that way, right? (laughs) I I do, Daniel. Thank you so much. Uh, You are one of the most um, important people in my life, and to be here sitting with you is, makes a great day. Fridays are always good. Today's especially good. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us. And, you know, you've been one of my greatest inspirations as I've considered and studied into the topic of connection. And today's topic is really how connection creates and builds hope. And I think as I think about that that term hope, that's one of the most important things when we're talking about mental health, because if we don't have hope, what else do we have? You know what? I, I couldn't agree with you more that, you know, I, I you know, we go and, and this is in, in complete honoring of St. Paul, but, you know, of faith, hope and love, love is the important man. I, I actually would disagree with with all due respect. I actually think it's hope. You know, sometimes we feel unworthy of love. Love can play hide and seek. Faith is intimidating that when our life is, especially in, in somebody like me as a somebody who suffered from clinical depression, would have faith is difficult, but hope, you know, Charles Schultz said that happiness is a warm puppy. I say, well, hope is a whole week, a whole litter of eight week old Labrador puppies. <laughs> like the hope just wants to be with us. Like it makes no demands. It's always available. But I like to say hope is very polite. It has to be activated. And it's always activated by way of connection. That's wonderful. And tell me a little bit about the importance of, of connection in general. And then and then I really want to dive into how that's played out, at least partially in your life, the importance of, of connection. So when I speak about suicide in particular, what I what I share with people is, is that for me, it's a malady of thought and feeling. And, and I, I think that we don't necessarily understand that. So I tell people, look, I'm a touchy feely speaker and that's a good thing because this is a touchy feely malady. So the sequence in my mind is it initiates with, with dark and awful thoughts, which create these overwhelming emotions, which direct these, what can be deadly actions. The beautiful thing about connection is when we are in connection with at least one other person, we think different, we feel different and we do different things. So, and then connection, because oftentimes in my experience, the emotions that are associated with a feeling of being depressed or suicidal actually are, are faster than our thoughts. Connection allows our brain to pause for a moment mm. and then sync up in a way they're like, wow. And I think, you know, the key to keeping people safe is to slow things down. Connection does that in the most beautiful way. And, you know, when hope shows up, you know, that litter of, of eight week old Labrador puppies, like, <laughs> Wow. And and my belief is hope is the essential thing. When I work with the military, I say hope is a weapon. People never kill themselves when they're hopeful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. So I think hope is the greatest medicine. Hope is the greatest weapon. And it's always created by way of connection. Wow. Something you you mentioned there about that pause, I'd never quite thought about that, but that's so true. You know, when I've talked to to people that are really struggling with intensive suicidal thoughts and despair, and it's like they're at the end of their rope and they're feel, they feel like they really don't have anywhere to turn. It's, it's almost like their, their thoughts are just spinning out of control and they feel like, Oh boy, it's, it's, it's going downhill fast and I can't stop it. It's like a freight train going, going down the tracks. And, and so you're saying in a way connection can actually stop that freight train. It can stop those spinning thoughts. It can put a pause so that the things can be rerouted down a different track. Absolutely. Exactly. Cause I think so two, two things. I read a quote the other day from Aristotle that basically said, one of the most beautiful things is to be able to hold a thought in mind and distinguish it. When somebody like me is suicidal, we can't distinguish the thought. And the great chef David Chang in his own battle with bipolar has this amazing quote, which underscores what I think is the foundation of the issue. When you're depressed, you become convinced that everything you think is true. So Mm, in that spiral downward, 
you know, I think at the core, suicide is about belief. Yes. Be, you know, a, a soul who's moving towards that difficult place, that awful place, is being moved forward on, on a place of belief. And we all know, in we standing in the belief of Christ, somebody could come with a report and say, here, I have empirical data to disprove that Christ walked the earth. Like, I don't care. It, it doesn't matter to me. And so the person who is moving into that dark place of, of suicide they're being driven forward by belief. And I think it's an important distinction if we want to move forward to allow them in slowing down, mm -hmm. maybe then they can look at those beliefs and in time with somebody like you and what Beautiful Minds is doing, help them create new beliefs mm -hmm. and the associated new reasons for living, thus hope. Yeah, and it makes me think of the saying that goes, don't believe everything you think. Exactly. Right? And, and it's so easy for us, well, I think it, and there, there, therefore, it must be be true because right. I've thought it for a long time. And then the more we get entrenched with certain thoughts and ideas, and and that's where I'm hearing you say the importance of connection can come in. And say, wait a minute, is that really a true belief about yourself, or about the world, or about others, or about God? It, absolutely, exactly. And I and I think again because connection pauses, it gives our mind a chance to catch up to how we feel, and then slows things down. Everything changes and, and it is impossible, in my opinion, in every instance of connection, even if it's just passing by and somebody smiles, hope is always there. It, it's always there. And, and, and you know this, Dr. Better, than I do, that our minds can't hold competing thoughts. It, it is impossible for me to think about killing myself when I'm in connection with another human being. Mm. And so then in terms of what do you do? Okay, for me... I want to go through my day, especially on difficult days. I'm just going to go out and create connection everywhere I go. And then I have some techniques that we can talk about. And I'm amazed at how they work. And, yes. I, and I think connection brings into the presence of God. And, and oftentimes it's God with skin on, mm -hmm. you know, this, this holy being, mm -hmm. not wearing robes, not, not appearing like Christ, but yet another brother and a sister walking this path of life. Like, okay. And it's beautiful how... God can use flesh and blood and work through them to completely break that cycle of despair through connection. Now, Woody, I've heard you speak several times. You're and and for our listeners, check out you know David Barley. What you probably won't find it on the internet under Woody, right? But no, David, I know <laughs> David Barley. Check 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 him out online. He has TED talks. He is one of the greatest inspirational speakers when it comes to mental health, and. So I'd love to hear from you, uh, share with us a little bit, you know, from your own experience, the importance of, of connection, because I've been so inspired by how it's made an impact in your life personally. So thank you. Um, and I really give credit to my evolution on extraordinary people like you and, and everybody else. And so 11 years ago on August 31st, 2011, I was going to kill myself. And as I say, I define suicide and clinical depression as a monster. It, it is the antichrist in every way, shape or form. And it has the ability in the place of isolation, and it did on this day, to convince me of all these awful lies, that I was weak and stupid, pitiful, grotesque, and ugly, and the most damning, and I'm sure, unfortunately, you hear this on a regular basis, that the belief if I killed myself, everybody would be better. And so I made my way to the Forest Hill Bridge on that day, and as I was literally leaning over the edge, a first responder from the great Placer County Sheriff's Department approached me from the left-hand side created connection, hmm. knowing that connection creates hope, hope is a weapon. And it pulled me off that bridge and then started me on this journey, as I say, from mental hellness to mental wellness. And I think connection, and you know, we talk a lot about self-care. Beautiful Minds is, is the greatest example of modern day mental health in terms of really the, the trinity of who we are in terms of body, mind, and spirit, that we must care for that. But I think sometimes when we talk about self-care, we think of bubble bath. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's not bad. You know, bubble <laughs> bath. part of it, right? Exactly. But it, it is work. You know, it, right. it, it is hard work. And if you met, for me, I described that self-care is a vehicle, connection is the fuel. Mm. Three mo I would say three wow. most important words in mental health are connection, connection, connection. It, Absolutely. It's, it's all about that. And, and the beautiful thing about connection, and I don't know another thing that's like this, it is purely reciprocal. Mm. And so thus, it is something that we can give to someone else. But on my difficult days, it's something that I can, I can also use to help me be well. 
it is really the unending circle of giving and receiving. Mm-hmm. You know, it it is really the act of bringing, you know, the 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 harvest into the storehouse in the words of Malachi, and then a blessing that is returned. That there is no, we, there's not enough room to store it. That the the over the prevailing the prevalence of hope. Like, yeah. I don't know what to do with it. It's it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, we were talking before the podcast how, you know, in, in my journey in psychiatry, as I've given and and done my best to connect with people that I've experienced healing too. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Like you said, it's that reciprocal aspect as we're connecting with others and we're maybe trying to support someone else. We are also receiving in the process. Too. Exactly. And that's why I just think it's, you know, it goes back to this God with skin on it, you know, I work a lot with the army. My, my big brother is, is a retired two-star general and the mm. most important man in my life. And, you know, what I say to the army and using you know, military vernacular that, that hope is a weapon. And if you look at the, the army, like many organizations is suffering from the crisis of suicide. What I share with the army is, I think what's happened is you didn't realize that you had the weapon right at your feet. Yeah. Like it's right here. And, and I think this is true in life. We have this thought this belief that suicide is a stationary target. Mm. Like it's just, but it is like all tyrants, it never sleeps in the same place mm-hmm, twice. Mm-hmm. And and what's happening is then is when we when we have a moving target, you know, what we have to do is we have to lead it. Mm. We mm-hmm. it's not in the same place. So what I say is connection is the weaponry, hope is the ordinance, but the target is not suicide. The target is the person who's running away for their dear life from suicide, we want to impact that person with hope because once they're hopeful, then they can actually, they are armed themselves. We're not establishing hope in other people. We're we're giving them harp so that they can defend themselves. Then they can turn around and face this monster. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole cadre of people behind them in this place of connection. I think that this is what will change the world, really. Absolutely. Now, Woody, um, I'm sure you've heard the the term "lonely in a crowd," right? Mm. And and so some of our listeners might be thinking, "Okay, great, yeah, you know, I get it. Connections important, but you know, here I'm around people all the time, but I still have that sense of loneliness, or I don't know how to really connect with people, and, and you know, because." I can be around people, but still feel connect disconnected. Right. So speak a little bit to that. So I think there, I teach three primary methods, uh, recognition, understanding, and expression. So R-U-E, Rue is the French word for path. This is the roadway. So the first thing mm. I teach, become a master of remembering people's names. Because we all we have all had the experience where somebody has remembered our name at a moment we had no expectation that they would. And and it it is this incredible feeling of connection. It, it, it's extraordinary. So all you need to do is practice. It's just a thing. And and when you do, when you call somebody forth, it is amazing. Quick story. There is, a, and this is not about me, but I'll, I'll just share. I was the vehicle. I go to the gym. There was a, a man there, um, ponytail, dark skin, looked a little like Christ, to be honest. Uh-huh. And he, his name is Angel. So I thought, okay, how do I remember his name? Pretty easy. Look like Christ, Angel. <laughs> so Angel is one of the people who clean. And I'm like, I just, I said, you do such a great job. And we had these, what I call micro connections. And every time I just talked to him, called him by his name. One day, Angel is in there scrubbing the dark ball marks off the racquetball court. I'm like, wow. I said, brother, I just got to tell you how much it means to me that you're so thorough. Wow. Walk away, then I'm working out and he comes up to me and he says, would you please remind me what is your name? And I think it's just this, Mm. It is so important for people. And the other thing is leverage curiosity to create understanding because behavior oftentimes makes no sense. Yeah. When you can, do- can I just interrupt you for a minute Absolutely. on that, that remembering names part? Because, you know, I think that's that's key. It's not it's much more than just the name. Like right. I but it's it's about being noticed. Absolutely. It's about being important. It's about being special. And, and we all need to have that sense. And, you know, if, if I'm just walking around and no one pays attention to me and no one notices that I'm there, I start having a sense like, oh, you know, maybe the world could do without me. And maybe I'm not that important. But on the other hand, you know, even if it's someone you don't know that well, but they're like, they give you that, you know, they look at you and they say, oh, Daniel, how are you doing? Oh. You know, and it, it, it makes a Difference in my day. I don't know about you. Oh, it, it, it's incredible. And I think what happens is we are going, once you practice, 
and it just takes practice. You're going to remember a person's name on a day unbeknownst to you that that soul is suffering, mm -hmm. that that soul feels invisible in a crowd. And yet you call them forth by name mm -hmm. changes everything. Wow. It, it creates an experience of connection. Yeah. And it, like you said, it, it, let's say they were really struggling and suffering and it might interrupt that freight train or, you know, just those spinning thoughts to change everything in a completely different tra trajectory. It, it does. And I'll, I'll just mention a quote that, that really surmises knowing we're on a, on a, unfortunately, a hard stop in terms of time because I could be here forever. So one of your contemporaries, Dr. Drew Ramsey, says this, someone you see today is thinking about killing themselves. Your smile, your question, your love could save them. Trust me, they told me it did. Wow. And so you <laughs> think like, that simple act of recognition, let me call you forth by name, like, wow. It'd be like somebody coming in and you saying, well, how are you doing? And said, you know what? I was going to a bad place and somebody remembered my name and I had no expectation that there was, like that can save a wow. life. That's beautiful. All right, so that was the R. Okay, <laughs> what so about understanding, <laughs> leveraging curiosity to create understanding because behavior, not just in the extreme of somebody like me on a bridge like that, but human behavior oftentimes Makes no sense. So quick animal story. Oh, good. I was hoping there we'd we hear go. an animal story. And, and, so, and give a little context to I, how, I sure how, how you have so many wonderful animal right. stories. <laughs> so my former beloved, Deanna, who's still a great friend of mine, we ran a very large animal sanctuary called A Chance for Bliss. And we took in animals that were sick, special need, or the vast majority were dying. And I have a little OCD, so it was very, very clean. So we had this beautiful <laughs> pond for the waterfowl. One day we brought this goose named Adia. A-D-I-A, -A, which is Swahili for beautiful. So he was mm. an African goose, kind of brown and black. Wow. So put Adia right on the cusp of everything that he was entitled to experience. It was Shangri-La. But instead of moving forward into that, he jumped into this small bathtub-sized water trough that was on the edge for the other animals to drink out of. <laughs> we bring people to the cusp of, of so beautiful. Here, 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 there's this beautiful well, pond exactly. to go, and, and the goose jumps into the watering trough. <laughs> right, like, why would you do that? Makes sense. And we bring souls to beautiful minds and, and everything that's here. And yet they stay in that same bathtub sized water trough of their suffering. So I pull a Dia out like, no, you don't understand. He jumps right back in. <laughs> we do this 10 times. Now I've gone from, wow, that's kind of curious to you're bugging me. <laughs> Deanna comes, we looks at the situation. We need to do an situation. intervention here. <laughs> right. Realizing curiosity creates understanding, makes a call, comes back and says, the rescue organization said Adia had lived his whole life in the backyard of a hoarder's home. Wow. And so the only water he had ever seen in his entire life was this stagnant, smelly water that filled up just barely a kiddie pool. Wow. So here I have the unreasonable expectation that I can put him in the presence of everything perfect can't do it. And I think people like me, maybe my friend tried meds and it didn't work. Maybe, maybe somebody went into a psych hospital, maybe this IOP thing, maybe it doesn't be. And so I actually sat down like to just take all this in. And here's the beautiful thing about understanding in the moment of understanding a solution almost always pops up. Mm. And I'm like, Hey, I can just get a second water trough. Adia can have his. <laughs> so I'm sitting down <laughs> processing awesome. all this five minutes later, Adia pops up out of the water trough, walks around my back, sits down right next to me and looks up. And I was feeling judged, rightfully so. <laughs> Five minutes after that, he walks right back to the edge of the pond to everything that he was entitled to experience and then went into the pond. Mm. When someone feels understood and thus connected, there is a high likelihood that they will come into the grace of somebody like you. But in the absence of that, they're never going to. Wow. So recognition, understanding, the last is expression. Okay. I just want to comment on the, the, the understanding <laughs> so part because that is beautiful. And, you know, I think it's so easy for us to actually judge and be like, hey, you know, I'm trying to offer you so much good here. Why can't you just take it? And But when we understand the context of where people are coming from and when we take the time to really listen and to get their background, to get their story and say, you know what, I want to understand why you are making the choices that you're making, you know, why you're doing the things you're doing it without judgment, right? you know? And, and when you have that sense, I know for me, when I feel that sense of acceptance, like oh. I can completely be who I am, it makes me feel so safe that it actually becomes an agent for change. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? You think about just how beautiful life is. We had two other geese at the time. And as Adia swam forward into the pond, he swam into the presence of the other two geese, mercy and grace. Wow. <laughs> and, and I think that that's where connection can usher us into. And, and one of the things that I've learned is, and someone taught me this, is, well, is to really get rid of why. Like, mm -hmm. because why requires justification mm. that what and how questions are, if nothing else, create the likelihood that somebody really will share because yes. they're like totally neutral. Yes. And it sometimes is a little clumsy, but the, the difference would be why are you late as opposed to what caused you to be late? Right. Why are you doing this as opposed to what was behind your decision to do this? Mm -hmm. So just all to create understanding, to make sure we, me as the goose will move forward into this big pond that... This is what God wants me to experience. I, I am worthy of this, even if the monster has convinced me I'm not. Wow. And listening to you is so inspiring. It, it, it reminds me that some of the best therapists were never trained as therapists. Because what <laughs> the things you're talking about right now is like, wow, that's that's potent stuff. So yeah. yeah okay. So let's jump into the E. Tell D me is an expression. So William James, as I know you know, has this, has one of the it's probably my favorite quote that says, the deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. And it's not so much an appreciation for what you do as appreciation for who we are. And so we got to express ourselves, and we can do a text, we can do a, a phone call, but it's the good old fashioned handwritten note that are the things that, you know, we go to the mailbox and we see that uniquely sized envelope and it's handwritten. And there's usually like a, a puppy return address label. And we know it's going to be something good. It's going to be, it's going to be an invitation, it's going to be cash, or it's going to be somebody saying, you know what, you mean something to me. And I've received so many and I recently did a talk to the great 10th Mountain Division, uh, Fort Drum, and the commanding general, who is an absolutely extraordinary human being, Major General Milford Beagle Jr., at the end of it, sent me a handwritten note. And he said, David, if, if there was a picture of hope, it would be you. Hmm. And I think, wow, <laughs> like hot God, you know, God has allowed me to be show up in his handiwork. And then I get this affirmation, like you could give me a million dollars for that. I, I would not give it. I, so those little tokens, it goes back to. And, and that didn't take a lot of words, right? Oh, no, I mean, it, like... <laughs> it, it didn't. So you go back to what the, Dr. Ramsey said, your smile, recognition, your question, understanding your love expression could save them. Trust me, they told me it did. So doctor, like you said, Daniel, you don't have to be clinically to train. You don't have to be a graduate of the great Loma Linda. Just be a human being. And we, we are responsible for our brother and sisters. Doesn't mean they have to live with us. What just means they have to be, we need to extend them the grace that we want. That's beautiful. And you know, that whole idea of expression, it really makes me, impressed to think about the idea that love really dies without expression. Oh. But the more we express that we care, I think it really, it's like watering that love plant and it just, it, it flourishes and it actually uh, it helps the other person not only to feel love, but then I think when we're loved, it makes it that much easier to want to love in return. Exactly. I mean, it says, you know, we can't give what we don't have. And yet I think it's incumbent, you know, to be about our father's work is to give what we received. That's right. To, and, and then we can't help it to not be blessed. Yes. It's like this perfect win, 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 win situation. Absolutely. And, and then, it, you know, it, there is that that fragrance that stays on us. You know, what I think it was Mark Twain that says forgiveness. Forgiveness is the fragrance left on the heel. I'm messing it up. But, you know, imagine you somebody steps on a flower. Mm-hmm. And yet the scent of the flower remains on the heel that crushed it. Mm. That's that's forgiveness. I think wow. love is the same thing. I totally messed it up, but it's just. No, but the idea it, is beautiful. It, 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 we can't help but to receive. That's why the reciprocity of connection mm -hmm. when two or more are gathered. I, I, I think it's like what saves lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about some, some thoughts about the whole. So connecting with people is important, but let's say someone is feeling like, man, I'm just surrounded by like people that bring mm. me down or negative. And can the spiritual element connection with God, how, can that sometimes help us to kind of, especially if we feel like 
there's not really that human connection that I'm oh, struggling with. Well, I think, you know, when I talk about my model of self-care, it's body, mind, and spirit. The foundation of it is God, mm. you know? And when I speak in a secular environment, I talk about spirituality to say, okay, let me take the G word out mm -hmm. just for a moment because mm -hmm. I don't want to have somebody disconnect from what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Spirituality for me is synonymous with purpose, mm. with meaning. In the words of the great Simon Siddick, it is our why. And so in the presence of toxicity in terms of people around us, I, I think it is incumbent of a, for a person like me to become, to look for evidence of God through connection with other people. That And it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy. That that on tough days for me, the last thing I want to do is go connect with another human being. And yet there have been moments of, of peace of mind and mental health, the likes of which I've never experienced that I know, okay, I, if I can just hold on to that thought, God will propel me to that. Mm. God, God is so willing. God will not force himself upon us. And so he is that ally, you know, God would not say, hey, I feel you. God would say, I'm feeling with you. Mm. Like walk with me, dear child. And it's mm -hmm. hard. I'm not saying it's easy, but I think God is the foundation. God in going to the upper room, mm -hmm. but then God right here with mm -hmm. you and Sydney, this this is church to me. Yeah. Like th this is this is church. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it, and it and it's beautiful because we can realize in that that we can always be connected. Exactly. You know, even if we might not even be with another human being, we can be connected with God. But then when we are with human beings, we can see God working in and through them. You know, for me, some of my greatest uh, times of feeling connected, even though there wasn't a soul in the world, was being out in nature on like a you know, mountaintop or wherever it might be. And just having that sense of like, wow. You know, I, it's, I, <laughs> you know, and I had I had an amazing experience recently. I, I think the frustration and I I can only imagine in the aftermath of, of a soul losing their battle mm -hmm. to to the monster of suicide that people are like, how could they not know how how could they not realize the impact of that choice? And, you know, what I would say is, one, somebody like me has the erroneous belief that if I killed myself, you would be better. But let's put that aside. I think more in, more significant is we don't feel worthy. So I was on a plane not long ago, early morning flight. I was on the window seat and looking out. And for the first time in 59 years, looking out the window, I had this spiritual experience to, to understand what the impact of my death would be. Hmm. But the, the important distinction was it wasn't about guilt. It was about worth. Hmm. It wasn't about, yeah, I would have hurt all these people. It was so different. It was, I am worthy to be alive. I, by my own presence and all my imperfections, but the fact I'm a child of God, I have worth. And it was, I'm like, wow. So it boils down a lot to the identity, like realizing our identity in God as, the chi as a child of God, that gives us worth. It does. It's not it, anything we do. Right. It's just exactly. Who we are. And it was such an amazing, like, okay, I didn't know I was in a cathedral, I thought I was in a plane. <laughs> and it was, and it took me a while to make the distinction, like, because no, it wasn't like I would have done this, as you say, it's who I am. Absolutely. And I think one of the questions I will often ask to a brother or sister, and they all are brothers or sisters to me, is what would it be like if you had some notion that you were worthy? You know, and I love that question. It was posed mm. to me because it's just like, wow. Yeah. Like, wow. Well, it, you know, it's like it it slows the mind down to consider this possibility. I'm like, whoa. So, I mean, it's all God. I mean, Absolutely. It, re it really is. And, and a dear friend of mine said, you know, there is no spot where God is not. Yeah. God, God's everywhere. You know, we just sometimes need to open our eyes a little bit and like, I see you. Yes. You're very sneaky. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So remembering recognition. So the R, you know, it, like remembering names, right. recognition. Right. The U, understanding. Right. The E, expression. Right. And you said that's Rue, which is, you said French? French. For it's pathway or road. Pathway or road. Like the, that is the road, right? And I there, think the order is important. Yes. You can't connect with somebody who you don't recognize. Yes. You can't express to somebody that you don't understand, like, what's the most effective method of, you know, let's not make it up. And then express. Just like everybody needs to hear it. You know, you could say, I needed to hear I love you in the morning, needed it in the afternoon, maybe let nap time, and then at night. 
you know what? We all need love. We all need, we all need hope. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Woody. Oh. It's been a blessing to have you. And thank uh, you, Daniel. I always feel very connected whenever we spend time together. <laughs> My grandmother would say right back at you. <laughs> Thanks for listening. To hear more episodes, find us on social media, or support us financially, visit thebrainpeoplepodcast.com. 